Is there such a thing as a poor man's dangerous game cartridge? Dangerous game hunting traditionally is not an activity that's known for being inexpensive, right? So how do we find a cartridge that we can call a poor man's dangerous game cartridge? Well, the story starts in 1905. In Europe, Germany specifically, when a man named Otto Bock invented a cartridge called the 9.3 by 62. It was wholeheartedly welcomed into the Mauser cartridge fold and became wonderfully uh, famous, well adopted across the continent. Very popular for use on Eurasian wild boar, those big, gnarly beasts unlike most of our wild pigs here in America, as well as species such as the Eurasian brown boar, uh, red stag, and so forth, right down to use on the smaller deer species such as roe deer. It made its way to the African continent in the hands of German and Dutch settlers, and there provided yeoman service on uh, all the Plains game species, including uh, Cape Buffalo which the settlers found it uh, you know, quite useful for, for weeding black death from the cabbage patch and for putting meat on the family table. Now, the cartridge eventually, uh, over the decades, proved to be so effective, even though technically uh, quite moderate in performance, proved to be so effective on Cape buffalo and other species of dangerous game, such as lion and leopard, that it was... Uh, it has been written in to many, even most of the regulations in various African countries as an exception to the 375 H&H minimum cartridge rule. Let's take a look at a few specifications. And just for reference, here on this side of our cartridge lineup is a 375 H&H cartridge. You can see these other cartridges, which are all 9.3 by 62 Mausers, are somewhat smaller, right? Bullet diameter is 0.366. Traditional bullet weight for the heavy for caliber bullets in this cartridge is 286 grains. Now that converts from some kind of weight in grams, I presume, from the metric system, which is how we arrive at that somewhat odd number of 286 grains. But the important thing to know, my friends, is that a 286 grain 0.366 diameter bullet has a sectional density of 0.305. It's north of that magical 0.300 number that savvy dangerous game hunters require for use on big dangerous game. Now what kind of performance does this leave us with? I've got a few notes here on my handy dandy page. Uh, typical muzzle velocity from a 24 inch barrel runs about 2360 feet per second and generates a little in excess of 3,500 foot-pounds of energy. For now, now for you energy disciples out there, you recognize that's not very much for use on dangerous game, where most proponents like something uh, of 4,000 foot-pounds or heavier. More is better, most people agree, for use on animals such as Cape Buffalo. That's 19% less than the 375 provides, which is generally around that 4,300 foot-pounds of energy mark. Now, some other specifications, uh, 286 grains is about 5% less than the 300 grain weight traditionally used in the 375. And that velocity of 2,360 feet per second is about 8% less than you'll get shooting a 375 H and H bullet at about 2,560 feet per second, which I believe is kind of that normal uh, parameter there. Now, how about the interesting uh, specifications that apply to the 9.3 by 62 cartridge? It generates about 30% less recoil than the 375 H and H. It's around uh, 30 foot pounds of uh, free recoil energy in a nine pound rifle. That's opposed to about 43 foot pounds of free recoil energy in a 375. Now, uh, there's another really interesting parameter there in terms of firepower. A traditional rifle action without a drop box magazine in a 375 will hold five cartridges in the magazine, of course, plus one in the spout, which you put in there as you make your final stock on dangerous game. Being a cartridge with the same body diameter 
nominally as cartridges such as the 30 6 and the 7 by 57 Mauser. The 9.3 by 62 allows usually five in the box magazine of a traditional bolt action rifle, plus one up the spout. That is about a 40% increase in rounds on tap. And that can, can be significant at times when you're engaging with dangerous game, right? When things don't go as hoped for with your first shot. So let's um, consider what this cartridge is good for. Well, it's obviously really good for use on the broad spectrum of deer species and plains game antelope species, all of them. There is no hooved animal that's too big for the 9.3 by 62. You can drop down to a 250 grain bullet, such as this Barnes tipped triple shock here on the, this side of the cartridge lineup, push it at 2,500 to 2,600 feet per second in hand loaded ammunition, and it gives wonderful performance out to 300 yards or even a bit more in the hands of a savvy rifleman. You can pair, and usually should pair, your heavy bullet, that 286 grain bullet, such as this Barnes triple shock here, with a solid, non-expanding design. They'll generally hit about the same point of impact at 100 yards, and the solid is really designed for your follow-up shots on games such as Cape Buffalo, where you may need to take a shot at a buffalo departing, going straight away and try and rake him all the way from stern to stem, breaking heavy bones and compromising all of the, the organs, the vital organs along the way. What you really hope you don't need, but that bullet is capable of, is taking a frontal shot on an incoming Cape buffalo or lion or such, where it will do the same thing and rake it from front to back uh, no expansion, so it's going to drive very deep, uh, very straight, and disrupt everything that it comes in contact with along the way. How about rifles available in this cartridge? Because, you know, a lot of Americans haven't really heard of it, even though it's very popular in Europe and Africa. There's a great, um, I don't want to call it an entry-level model because it's a very nice rifle, but a quite affordable modern rifle that's readily available on gun broker or various gun stores that's commonly chambered in the 9.3 by 62 and that is Sauer's Model 100 Classic XT and you can usually find these for significantly less than a thousand dollars. Over the years a few Ruger Africans and uh, single shot Ruger number ones have been built in 9.3 by 62 and those are probably the best of the classic American made uh, semi-production type rifles that you can find. There are also rifles by Blazer and other similar European manufacturers. They're fairly ex expensive because these are the Swiss watches of uh, modern rifles around the world, right? But readily available in the cartridge. My favorite way to go when shopping for a 9.3 by 62 is with a vintage rifle, such as this nice old Dumoulin Mauser that I recently hunted with on the Dark Continent. You can find these, they might be anywhere from 50 to 100. 10, 120 years old. You can find them on Gun Broker or various gun shows and so forth. They tend to be very uh, well-built, nice rifles. It's important to note, since I mentioned hand-loading a little bit ago, most factory ammunition for the 9.3 by 62 is loaded to quite modest pressures out of respect for old vintage rifles that weren't built on super strong action. However, with a rifle based on the Mauser 98 type action or any of these modern rifles that I've mentioned, you got a very strong action and it's 100% safe to load to 30-06 levels of pressure. Now, data, hand load data is not readily available to reach pressures like that. A legendary gun rider named John Barsness is a big fan of this cartridge and has done a bunch of pressure testing with the cartridge uh, loaded to 30-06 levels of pressure. And you can find that information if you do a little bit of research. Uh, seems like the two powders that achieve that sweet spot are big game. I think it's ramshot big game for the heavy bullet range. And Hodgson's Varget for the 250 grain bullets. You can achieve that 2,500 to 2,600 foot per second range with Varget under a 250 grain bullet. Okay. What else? How about ammunition available for the cartridge? You know, it's, it's surprisingly more common than you might think. Federal offers several loads with a variety of different bullets, including 
Uh, these two in the middle right here, this is a 286 grain Barnes treble shock and a Woodley Hydro Solid, uh, both in the same grain weight. They both shoot to the same uh, point of impact. That's what I used in this rifle to take on uh, Buffalo, Cape Buffalo in Namibia only a, a recent time ago. Uh, Nosler makes ammunition. Hornady loads ammunition here in the States. And of course, in Europe, most of the big ammunition companies, including Lapua and Norma, probably RWS and so forth, load ammunition. So it's not real hard to find. You can find cases, reloading dies, component bullets quite easily. And it's a very polite, easy cartridge to hand load. Let's tell some hunting stories. Uh, my son, William, used this rifle to take an Impala at 56 yards. Wonderful stock. I was so proud of him. Shot it facing straight on, hit it at the base of the throat, and we recovered that bullet nearly at the tail. That was with a 250 grain Barnes tip triple shock hand load. He also made a follow-up shot on a blue wildebeest. He hit it, it turned, was leaving, he hit it again, raking it from uh, the, behind just to stop it, right? Once you've got a bullet in an African game animal, you keep shooting till they're down. Hit it beside the tail and we recovered that bullet in the uh, front lobe of its lungs at the front of the thoracic cavity. Again, terrific penetration. That's a cow elk sized animal. And finally, he took his um, number one game species in Africa, big zebra stallion at 220 yards with a perfect double lung shot. And folks, let me tell you something. Zebra meat is some of the best on this earth. I will take a zebra steak all over almost anything else I've ever eaten. Then it was my turn. I shot a giant blue wildebeest, the type that seems almost prehistoric when it hits the ground. I took that after playing cat and mouse with it for some time in thick brush. I got a brief window at 214 yards. He was quartering to me and I broke that heavy shoulder and we recovered the bullet at the back of the rib cage on the far side. Beautiful, clean, one shot kill. And then we went after Cape Buffalo. And I've hunted Cape Buffalo before, but always with proper big boards, 416s, a 475 Turnbull and so forth. This was the smallest cartridge in the lightest, handiest rifle that I've ever hunted Cape Buffalo with. I was quite cautious because I was cognizant of the need to make a clean, perfect first shot uh, into that vital area. Professional hunters will tell you that with Cape Buffalo that the first shot is all important. If you hit them cleanly through the vitals, they just die like anything else. If you don't, or if you shoot around the edges of the vitals and that adrenal response kicks in, you've just bought yourself a war with Black Death. I didn't want that. So when my opportunity came, it was that classic, perfect, straight on frontal shot, 74 yards, and I put the bullet right at the base of his throat, took out his heart. We found that bullet, which is this right here, this uh, 286 grain Barnes triple shock expanded beautifully. You can see it has that classic uh, X-shaped flower on the front. We found it in the abdomen, deep, deep penetration. That bull went maybe 30 seconds, vanished into the thorn brush thicket before we heard that classic death bellow that every buffalo hunter longs to hear after he shoots. And that bull was stone dead when we tracked him. He'd gone maybe 80 yards. Wonderful, wonderful performance and just another proof of how versatile this cartridge is. Is it a 375, a contender with the 375 H&H in terms of worldwide capability? on game ranging from the tiny deer species such as roe deer, the smallest African antelope, right up to the biggest and gnarliest of coastal brown bears and uh, Cape buffalo, even hippo elephant, that sort of game. You know, I think it is a contender and it's much easier for recoil sensitive people to shoot well. It's probably not quite as good on the biggest species such as uh, uh, elephant. You know, if you want to shoot an elephant, you're probably going to get the job done with a 9.3 by 62, but you'd better be very, very careful with the shots you take and make very good shot placement. Better off with something a little bigger. Uh, but for game up to including Eland, Cape Buffalo, Giraffe, for those who want to shoot uh, the biggest of that type of planes game in Africa, works wonderfully. And there you have it, folks. I'm going to consult my notes here for uh, 
a few, you know, this is something that I noted down where I was just kind of mentally going over what I love about this cartridge. It's one of the most versatile do-all cartridges ever designed. You can hunt anything from small deer uh, to big buffalo with it. It's comfortable to shoot, and yet it impacts with you know, sledgehammer-like authority, folks. Uh, there are plenty of rifles and ammunition available for it. Uh, it's got more than a century of proven performance on a vast spectrum of game, ranging right up to those big grizzly bears and buffalo, like I mentioned. It's, um, it really is that original poor man's dangerous game cartridge because of what it was used for. You know, simple folks in Europe using it to hunt wild boar and Eurasian brown bears and red stags and those Dutch and German settlers in Africa using it to fill the larder and protect their crops against herds of Cape buffalo and um, marauding lions. It's uh, since, in more recent years, become something of a savant cartridge, you know. Folks that really love uh, what I like to think of as a little big boar, where it recoils e politely, it's easy to shoot well, and yet it has all the downrange authority you need. It's a, a very good cartridge. It's a wise choice for its effectiveness combined with its very shootable nature. Now, before closing, folks, allow me to invite you to check out the Backcountry Hunting Podcast, which I host, where we try to entertain, inspire, and educate on all things hunting with, I confess, a strong bias toward fine rifles and good hunting cartridges. As Ron Spomer would say, hunt honest and shoot straight. My friends, I'm Joseph Von Benedict, and I'll see you in the Backcountry.